Hello, welcome back to our sleep channel. This is Dr. Pahlam Aragoslu. Here I will talk about different issues related to sleep and insomnia. Um, I have been thinking how to uh, put all of the information that is relevant about how we dream into a context that is uh, palatable and more likable by a larger audience. And uh, I try to talk about how we dream and what happened and what places in the brain um, get activated. However, I try as my best to avoid the um, jargon and um, expert language. So as we go to sleep, the brain goes to different stages that different things happen inside the brain. We now know a lot of these um, events have relations to processing of emotions and processing of uh, memory and information that we receive during the day. The neuroscientists who work on uh, dreaming and sleep showed us that a lot of time for the information that we receive during our awake time, or here and now times, we need some offline time for the brain to figure them out, see how they are related to our other information, other memories, and what is the significance of them and how we can use them. So when we sleep, the brain starts doing that. In REM sleep, that is the time of sleep that is mainly later in the night, the brain wakes up inside itself and deals with emotions. Some parts of the brain that process emotions like amygdala uh, and memories like hippocampus, limbic system, of course, the emotion gets more active, our visual cortex, begin to be much more active, but our executive, the thinking brain, is less active. And during this time, the brain tries a broader association pattern to figure out where and how to categorize and place a, a memory. Um, another thing that happens is that when we have a lot of emotions about an event, the brain takes that memory and deals with the emotion in a way the emotions of the memory does not hurt us. Um, those memories get much more securely um, stored and categorized in different places. So we do remember them a lot better. For example, if we had a very nice memory that had positive emotion and had a relations to a smell. That a smell for sure will bring that memory back to us even years later. Um, and that's because it was um, joined with emotion, the memory. And this is one of the things that we do during a sleep and dreaming. I don't want to um, equalize the sleep and dreaming and there are different things and different things happen um, at different stages of sleep, but we now know during all the sleep we dream. Um, the dreams, as I mentioned last time, are more crude and episodic in the non rem sleep and in the rem sleep they are more um, having narrative and also have a lot more emotional load. And when I talk about narrative, it reminds me of Dimaggio's um, teachings that every time there is a narrative inside the brain, inside the subjective experience, that is conscious. So it's to me, it's fair to say that during the REM sleep, we are conscious. And I think a lot of scientists agree with that. The emotional processing and memory processing and figuring out what are the possibilities 
that this new memory uh, links to the old memory and our old learning and what we can learn from this memory has things to do with dreaming. So in my opinion, dreaming is really, really important and a part of our being. Um, 99.5% of people, humans dream, and also we have some uh, indications that most likely higher animals like mammals, dogs, cats dream also. Obviously, nobody can ask their subjective experience, so it is very hard to know if they are dreaming. <clears throat> so, during the past couple of centuries, we went from one side of the spectrum with Freud that was saying that dreaming is everything, is our wishes, and our wishes come in disguise, and... Um, is a thermostat for our brain, thermostat for emotions, and will um, make sure that our sleep can continue to the other side of the pendulum that Hobson was saying that dreams are completely half hazard and the best job that our cortex can make from uh, some uh, accidental memory processing. We came back to I would say middle, that we are for sure aware that there are functions to dream, they are not half as hard. And uh, if you look at Dr. Solm's work, or if you look at um, other scientists from Europe have written about how much dopamine system or reward system uh, have things to do with dreaming, and in a landmark study, Dr. Sohn showed that um, lesions in some place in the prefrontal cortex will uh, stop dreaming. And uh, um, that is our reward system, our seeking system. So dreams have things to do with our what we seek, but also have bigger function that is um, processing emotions and memories. So. Like I was saying, the pendulum went from one side to the other side and now coming to the middle. Um, and a lot of scientists worked on this. And I would like to refer you to Dr. Zadra's work in the last few years. A lot of good assimilation of what dreams mean um, is there that somebody who likes to know more details can um, can definitely use that. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I catch up with you next week. So please uh, support us by subscribing and telling your friends about us. Thank you.